What's going on, Savages? Welcome to another episode of the Savage Snowflake Podcast with me, Jeff Leach, your friend, your lover, your mother, your father, your confidant, your teacher, and your diligent student. Thank you very much for coming back for a bit more comedy, a bit more conversation, an interview, some learning, some growth. Who knows what opportunities lay ahead of us? We've got an hour to find out with my next guest. Before I do that, I want to say thank you very much to you guys, first of all, for supporting this podcast. I know some of you are going, wow, all this support. Surely Jeff doesn't need any more. That's a lie. There's a small handful of you who are diligently listening, I guess, every single week, but then also, you know, showing your support for all the content I put up, eight episodes every single month for at least an hour of time. Uh, There's a lot of work that goes into that, booking, producing, and editing the show, blah, 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 blah. I'm whinging about nothing. Do me a favor, give me some money, help it out. Go to patreon.com slash savage snowflake. I don't know how much you pay for Netflix these days. What is it, like 15 bucks a month? Maybe throw me a buck a month. That'd be really appreciated, or five bucks, or whatever you can to keep this bad boy going. Thank you very much also to our sponsors who are doing just that, manscaped.com. Finest purveyors of trim, uh, I guess, technology for your downstairs areas, gentlemen. If you're a suit gentleman like me, you've got a big old hairy thigh going on. Maybe you've got balls that look a little bit like Godzilla. Get your fucking trimmers out. The Lawnmower 2.0 from Manscaped.com. It's got skin-safe technology. You will never nick or cut your nuts, and they will thank you when they are shiny and smooth. In fact, your lover will thank you too. I'll thank you because if you use code SAVAGE over at their website, manscaped.com, you'll get 20% off of their products, you'll get free leather travel bag, and you'll get free shipping on every order. And Boundless Tech are the finest purveyors of vaping technology. If you like flour, you like resin, you like smoke crude, I don't care what the fuck you put in your body, do it with vaping technology, not burning it and getting all those carcinogens. You don't want to ruin the flavor of your weed, you want to taste every single bit of that THC goodness. You want to get all the different cannabinoid levels and uh, terpenes to get the flavors and the fruitiness. You can do that with their vaping technology. I like the Terra and the CF710, but go and check out all of their products right now at bndlstech.com. That's boundlesstech.com. Use code SAVAGE for 25% off all of their wonderful technology. Now it. You're up now. My guest today, ladies and gentlemen, is a comedian. Um, he's uh, been performing all over the country for a few years. Um, man, I look like shit recently. compared to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sorry, man. I like I, g- I gave you a good angle. I gave you a high angle, and like I didn't want. I can. I can you got that Chris you? Cornell vibe going. I look like some I've got, fat. If Midwest. it makes you feel better, dude, I haven't washed my hair for like a day and a half, and it's already oily as fuck. My skin looks a little aggressive today. It's got a few little zits going on, so I'm not feeling myself either. But it's not about that. We're here to talk about comedy and about love and hatred within the community, man. (laughs) Um, You've come on the podcast because um, you reached out to me and we performed together in back in New York City, I believe. Yeah, and I remember you, um, you, you had a tweet. So I saw your tweet when I was getting bombarded about uh with pat oswald and me in there like all right come, so come is, settle this on give, the, yeah. well, this is, i'm gonna give people the um the background so so you reached out because we uh, you and pat and oswald uh you know he's a, another comic if you guys don't know him he's <laughs> and an actor well he's an actor he's, yeah, he's, he's successful he's very successful he's very well known but not everyone will know of him yeah. um but yeah you had a bit of a spat online on twitter there's a bit of a beef and then one of my previous interviews that i just had was with neil brennan um and through the conversation the subject of you and Pat and having a beef. You know, we talked very generally about comics kind of going head to head. Right. And his comment was effectively something, uh, I'm paraphrasing, you know, you'd have to watch the episode, which I hope you have or you will. Um, But he basically sort of says, you know, I kind of, I don't see the point in having that back and forth. Who's got time for that? You know, it's a pointless exercise. And I said, well, is that only when it comes from one side of the fence or one type of comic? Because, you know, uh, a friend of his and a very liberal, uh, at least his profile, public profile of Patton Oswalt is uber liberal, uber liberal, very, very much PC and, you know, uh, he's, vir- he's a virtue signaling type comic who's always, yeah. always behind the latest, latest uh, social the climate to do. supported uh, positive message. And, um, and you feel like that's not honest, not an honest representation of what he actually feels or what he believes. But yeah, you went head to head and Neil was like, I don't think there's any space in that. And I said, well, then shouldn't there be no space from Patton to get involved in those kind of conflicts too? You know, this man is uh, more successful, certainly in terms of careers thus far. Um, and so therefore, how does he have time to have these online spats, you know? Right. Um, and so you were like, hey man, I wanted to clear a few things up about what went on there and also what your take on it was, which I think is always interesting to hear the, you know, to hear that conversation. Yeah, because I, I think everyone had an opinion on it. And I mean, I got bombarded, bombarded, 
I, I could. First of all, Pat, I think Pat Oswald has like f- almost five million Twitter followers. I'm such an infinite fucking child that all I could focus on there was the fact that when you said it, it sounded like bombarded instead of bombarded. Oh, <laughs> it made me really happy because I just got the impression that your inbox was just full of DMs yeah, I of I, I, hot fucking ass. I had just, to protect mm. the tweets because I couldn't handle it. Like it was just too much. It was like coming at me, you know, and it was all like bots with like. Uh, 12 Twitter followers, like just, you know, virtual signaling, like you were saying. And uh, so what were we going to say? What was the um, so what was the subject of a lot of these messages that you were receiving? Oh, it was like because uh, the way the way the patent was responding to my tweet. OK, look, well, he was retweeting with a comment. So yes. he was like he was opening but- up to his audience and I was yeah. going directly to him. Like it was at Pat Oswald. I wasn't trying to bring in the floodgates on it. OK, um, so. The initial tweet was something along the lines, uh, Jordan Peele said he would not cast white leads in his movies. Yeah, yeah. Which is fine. It's your movie. And I, I mean, I don't care what you do. You can do whatever the hell you want. Sure, sure, sure. And then Patton, and I've, I've kind of just been paying attention to his Twitter lately. I don't know. I'm bored. I, I, have, a lo- I have a lot of time on my hands. He... He shouldn't. He's successful. Okay. So, and I just I see a, a trend in what he's doing. You know, when Patton first came up, and I I, I don't even do you, know. Do you follow him on social media? Actually, did you follow him prior to that? I uh, I, I ghost follow him. I kind of keep an eye. <laughs> when I what does board. that mean? So you don't actually publicly hit that follow button? Yeah, but yeah. You check in every now and then on his account. Yeah, and I have a comedian friend who's not a big fan of his, and told okay. me some behind the scenes things about him. And I just thought, uh, you know, he's like you said, he's doing a lot of pandering to the left and what you're supposed to do, whatever the trend is. And I just said something to him. And I, well, I honestly, certainly did not say pandering to the left. Don't you put pan- words in my fucking mouth, Chad Zummer. <laughs> I said this is that's his at least his public persona. He's sure. very much, uh, you know, he's a, a kind of a supporter of overt PC, um, you know, uh, very progressive, left wing, politically minded. Yeah. And social climate driven. uh <laughs> Uh, I don't know. And he came up as hashtags. He's a hashtag guy, right? And he came up as an alt comic, a punk rocker type comic who wasn't a club guy when he first died. Yeah. Yeah, And now he's you're the system. You're the system guy. You're you're not allowed to be punk or alt anymore, in my opinion, Mm because you're in a Pixar film. You're on a network series. That's fine. He's very successful, and I'm cool with that. And to be honest with you, I never thought in my he would ever respond. I really I like have like twenty thousand followers, and I barely get to. I if you have four million, like how do you have the time? Like I really don't understand well you would have stood out though because you have you have a verified account and you have you know enough followers that i think your tweets will show up in a a bit of slight more prominence does that make sense in the feed okay um also i would always respond to a comedian who criticizes or at least publicly on their social media accounts says i'm 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 really interested to see what's what your take on things is and um because i get the impression at least from what we've said so far that you were a little bit upset and pissed off that you know, he publicly put your comment out there with a response and by doing that was encouraging his followers to oh, yeah. start. But my my first question is going to be, you're a comic yeah. and a good comic. I've seen you perform and I've seen you do incredibly well. So if a, if a, if an audience member in that room heckled you, as soon as they do that, they've broken the uh the fourth wall they've put themselves into your life in some way they've used their so i heckled pat smaller pat well i'm I'm, I'm asking the question is that they've used their small platform to put themselves into someone someone else's platform right um by hitting sending him a a message to him saying this is fucking bullshit your virtue signaling i don't believe any of it you're fucking you know you're part of the system that i'm paraphrasing again yeah but that kind of kind of a comment as soon as you do that, you have to acknowledge you're relinquishing, you're relinquishing your fucking right. privacy on it, man. That, like, like you know, if I send you a fucking message online going, "Yo, fuck you, Chad Zama," right. I'd expect you to respond and go, "No, fuck you, Jeff Leach." You know what I mean? And and let people know, hey, look at this. I was completely in the wrong for that, that in particular. But I do stand by what I said in that initial tweet. I don't even think what you did was wrong in any way, shape, or form. By the yeah. way, yeah. Like, if you believe that you wanted to, you go, ah, oh, you know what? I want to tell this guy what I think of the way that he's behaving yeah. and it, with his public platform. You are perfectly within your right to do that. And I'm not saying that your opinion is wrong in any way, shape, or form. That's your personal opinion. It's subjective. And it, it, whether it is the same or differs to mine, it doesn't fucking matter. It's perfectly valid. But he's perfectly valid as well to go, 
all right, motherfucker, you want to tell me I'm a cunt? I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna quote your tweet yeah. and I'm going to respond to it. And he's done this to lesser known comics before. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't want to bring up that situation. But well, that's a, a Napoleon complex, isn't it? Yeah, there's a yeah a little bit of a... Swinging his dick. Yeah, yeah. swinging it. Look at me. I'm the, I'm the man. Sure. Oh, and, you're going to come after me. I'm going to respond and you're going to see how many of my followers will tell you your account. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, of course. It's a, that's a dick swinging thing. So I, I got in full on roast mode because I'm coming at... Like people are just, you know, I, I'm glad your mom's dead, whatever. I, I saw, I mean... I got some really bad tweets, and I'm yeah. kind of like amused by it at this point. Yeah, yeah. And then somebody who says that's never nice, though. That's never a nice thing to receive. I've been trolled hard by community before. It's not. It's not an enjoyable thing. It doesn't yeah. feel good. Yeah, and, 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 and if you get a good crack in, I'll, I'll give you your. your oh, that's funny, but some of it's just sure, sure. pure hatred. Yeah. And the thing that really bothered me was. Uh, uh, someone tweeted at me like this is the this is the most fame you'll ever get th- from what Patton tweeted. Right, and I just re- I just replied to that person, I'm not chasing fame. I'm not. So tw- so this Pat wasn't even in the tweet. So he responds to it, quote tweets it, and saying good because it's running away from you on a, a jet ski. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I'm like I didn't even respond to you, dude. That's you're going through my timeline picking out little tweets. Well, he's he's doing. He's reversing the roles now, and you know you've you've acknowledged that you would ghost follow his account and look at things he says and does to to paint a picture of who he is. So he's just doing yeah. that back to you as well. That that was my that was my uh, like my main thing that I really wanted to understand from the conversation was, I think people in the same industry with different uh, peers peers you are peers in the industry having uh, constructive criticism for each other can be useful. Sure, absolutely. But I was surprised that you, um, some of the things you mentioned on your social media was a bit like, now his community is attacking me and, and things to that um, to that effect. Because I was going, as far as you pictured, placed yourself prior to that, it was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm like, I'm telling you, Pat and Oswell, I think you're, you're a two-faced full of shit. Yeah, and we're in an industry where people wouldn't dare to do that. Absolutely. Like that guy's, Absolutely, man. I mean, we're in the heart of it right now where yeah, yeah. everyone, you know, they're... Oh. Believe me, dude, I'm walking that fine line of being, I, I, I want to be true to myself and always be honest about what I feel about yeah. things and people and projects. But I also understand that every now and then I have to bite my lip and go, is this worth it? Yeah. Because and I have person, a tough time doing that. I yeah, really yeah. do. And it's, it's probably not serving me well, obviously. <laughs> well, no, for, first of all, you have a career. I think if you're a working comic, then you're a success. If you can, if you can pay your rent and bills by, by doing comedy, then you're, you're a successful comic. Um, it's all relative. But it, I was just a little surprised that you would be even bothered that he quoted the tweet on that his community came across because you'd be like, of course that's going to happen. Yeah. yeah what yeah, yeah. did you expect him his response to be? Do you think he'd ignore it? And in that case, why even bother sending him the message? Does I really sense? just thought he would never even look at it. I mean, okay. I, 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 I didn't do it for a reaction. I just kind of put it out there like, dude, like what the hell? Like, I, I, I would, in my... I'm, I'm squinting at you now because I'm... That part, I'm not a hundred percent certain is true. Well, because I've if I Sorry, tweeted I'm, at Tom I'm be Cruise, you, I'm I, I don't expect Tom Cruise to tweet me back. I, I just put it out there. But you hope he does because it will bring a huge amount of eyes to the to the the comment. Does I just didn't sense? think it would happen. I really didn't. I just didn't think he would. I thought he was like, "Who the fuck's this guy? Fuck him." No, as far as I can <laughs> tell, Pat Oswalt has had quite a few little internet spats on Twitter. Yeah, and is clearly someone who uh, is insecure enough that he cares about what people he may never have met or oh, yeah. worked with think about him so i i am not completely convinced first of all i'm not by the way this is not any kind of like expose or me trying yeah. to what, what the fuck did you mean i'm not i'm not in any way shape or form uh a pat and oswald enthusiast i don't know him i don't know him are as you a gonna person. edit this like they uh, they did on we uh, don't do any editing this is just one hour straight through no editing <laughs> the jim um, jeffries video <laughs> oh fuck no man i don't do yeah. i really like him but yeah no but i um <laughs> So I don't have a standpoint. I don't care about Patton Oswalt. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm not team Patton or team Chad. Yeah. I'm just, I'm being real with you, which is if I fucking sent a tweet yeah. at, uh, I wonder if, uh, actually, fuck it, Russell Brand. I, I've always been very open about the fact that I have uh, a shitty opinion of who Russell Brand is based on our personal dealings. He's wronged a few friends of his who are friends of mine as well. He's, uh, I think he's a two-faced scumbag and uh, sure. I'm glad his career has had the decline it's had over the last few years. <laughs> and and I know, and I genuinely, but I, I don't really wish ill on him. I just think he's a fucking right. vacuous prick. And the fact that you would say that, that's, that's cool. 
The fact I say is because it's what I really in feel. It. But I, I say because he's wronged me in personal ways that makes me sure. care to verbalize it. But there's plenty of other people that I think are untalented or undeserving to their success. Whatever. But I don't engage with those people because they've never personally wronged me. Right. And also, I know that that would just be a use of my energy on something incredibly fucking negative that really is never going to put me in any better position in, my, in what I'm trying to achieve. Right. And... um. Doing so, I think you're a, an intelligent man and you're, you're clever enough to know that if I, re, if I say this comment, in the same way that if I sent a message, a tweet, a public yeah. tweet on my platform, however much smaller it is than Russell Brand's, it's probably comparative to yours and, yeah. and I'm literally at 22,000 and he's probably at a few million as well. If I sent a tweet directly to Russell Brand with my little verified tag going, Russell Brand, you know you're a two-faced prick and you're never really about and you never... I would... Never expect a response, one. But if I did get a response, I knew that I was angling for it. Okay. And also, I would only be doing that to get a response from someone who I wanted to notice my opinion of them. You know, yeah. and, and to say that you were like, ah, this will get lost in the in the in the notifications. He'll never see it. There was a chance of that. Absolutely. But I wanted was, my I followers think, to see what I think. There you go. So you wanted to show to your followers. Hey, I think this guy yeah. Virgin is bullshit, and I don't like that yeah. kind of behavior in the comedy industry. But you didn't ever expect him to go. I never expected. Wait, him by the way, if you're calling me out for that, I, I have a chance now to respond and let my community know what I think of you. Yeah, doing that. Yeah, that's got to be expected. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I'm right in this situation yeah, by yeah. any means. I, I mean, I yeah. didn't. I had no idea it's gonna. It would become what it became. Did you have any more of a conversation with him outside of the public? back and forth or was there was there a series of person dms did you ever reach out and say hey man look this is really what i feel about what you're doing and yeah well because okay let me get to that okay um so he tweeted after that that uh fame's running away from you on a, a jet ski and i and, and, and at this point I'm, i was kind of getting a little annoyed so i was like no wonder why brody stevens didn't like you and bro that was kind of a low blow that's a really low blow yeah, yeah and i shouldn't have done that and you're friends with brody as well yeah i'm and very I'm close with brody and yeah that. um you know, using a, a friend's passing. That's a, like he's trying to hurt me, so I tried to hurt him, and I should not have said that. You regretted that. that comment. I do regret that. Okay. And then his. Then as it's, good, it's good to hear that as well, because, you know, as someone who. I was a very new friend of Brody's. You had a much longer long, longevity of career. Yeah. Sorry, of relationship with him over the course of your career and friendship. But, um,. Yeah, he. That's not you know. That's yeah, not I know him passing was such a sad. Fucking it, it, it's still. I'm still fucked up over it. I yeah. mean, I, I like I'll randomly just cry because he's not here and he meant a lot to me. But so I said that bad move, and then I'm getting tweets about the whole like listen and, and the alleged Patton killed his wife. I don't. I don't know that story. I really didn't sure, know sure. anything about it. So I'm getting these tweets, and his wife tweets at me something nasty, and I'm just like... Oh, his current wife. His current you. wife. Okay. And I'm like, where's this guy? And then Chris Titus chimes in from out of nowhere. I'm like, I don't know where he's coming hey, from. Who's Chris Titus? You have he, to give me He's a one. comedian. He's 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 had some success. He's had some specials. I know. You know, I know, he, I know the he comics the I perform with in New York and LA. That's, that's okay. about it. Yeah. No, he's a successful comic. Okay. And he's chiming in. So I'm getting... And so I get in roast mode, and I want to see his... I, I go, is this his wife? And I Google it. I told her, like, I was like, hey, sister, sleep with one eye open and I'd be safe. And that's when it got. <laughs> and now he, he quote tweets and I threatened his wife, which I never did. That was a bad joke, if sure, anything. No, I mean, you weren't threatening his wife. You were highlighting, the, making the joke, you know, based on uh, a small amount of public opinion that Patton had something to do with the death of his first wife. Yeah. You should be careful. Still not a nice thing to say. That's a now, real cunt move, man. It, it's, it is a cunt move. And yeah. I was in that mode, though, because <laughs> I'm getting, like, everyone's saying, like, I'm glad your mom died from cancer. So sure, sure, sure. It's like, it's, like, he's not. I'm, the effect of his community saying, and that kind of hateful shit to it you, put me in that mindset to say things to him but that wasn't directly coming from him like, yeah he was going after you your career this is how successful you are right Chad, and how more successful i am i'm swinging my dick yeah and you went yo by the way you know that friend of ours that killed himself yeah i mean he, he didn't fucking like you anyway and also yeah 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 that was so yeah man that was those are they were bad moves but I'm, I, I, it's yeah. nice to hear you like acknowledge okay i don't think that was the right way to deal with it and it was a it was a defensive reaction. It was a defensive reaction, and for, for that, like, and I didn't know the story. I just the people were tweeting that at me, so I, I really didn't know, and I, I personally don't believe it. I just that's <laughs> just something I said. Like, if you're gonna try to hurt me, I'm gonna hurt you right back. And that's when he blocked me, and that's when everyone blocked me, <laughs> and uh, and I just uh, you know then I was doing the punch drunk sports on all things comedy later, and I said, hey, call into the show, and they got tied into it, and they had nothing to do with it, so that became a thing, and. 
you know, it's it's died down quite what a ha- bit. What happened on all things? I love that uh, network, by the way. This is uh, on YouTube. I think it's owned by what, Bill Burr and a few other guys, right? Yeah, El Magical. They do good, you know, Bert Kreischer, they do great things over there. But I was on the, the Punch Drunk uh, Sports podcast, okay. which is the one I do with Sam Tripoli and Jason Tebow. And then some of his, uh, some of Patton's community they, started they, to call in. Going to all things comedy. Like, how could you have this guy? And it became this thing. They, they're like, we don't know what the fuck's going on. And now they're tied into it. And and I but you just, did the show. They didn't unbook you from the show or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I had to leave the studio. Oh, really? Yeah, because they were getting bombarded for no reason. They had nothing to do with any of it. So they, you know, they don't know what to do. They don't know. See, what- that's frustrating. I think if you have a public spat with someone, I, I, I hate, I hate, and I've been on the receiving end of something like that before, um, when, you know. People online who are just internet trolls, whether they're over liberals or right wing fascists, sure. they're all fucking mental. And people now will go, "Oh well, if I can't, like, if, oh what you're 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 having a spat online with a comedian like I know, I'll try and ruin your career and I'll phone up your." I think all that shit is fucking retarded. And yeah. I think for any any person or any company or entity that considers themselves a professional comedy company or production company it, for them to give a fuck about it. you've booked a guest yeah and understand who that guest is and what they do and if some fucking of course everyone's gonna have haters who reach out now but these people are emboldened now to just like because they're hidden behind a handle why would you have this person on or phone up and leave anonymous oh yeah god i hate this yeah. person that's bullshit so i'm sorry that you got you didn't get to finish your appearance on the show that's ridiculous yeah it was very very odd and and, and again it's like i they're, they're good people i have nothing against any of them they just got looped you know lo- lumped into it was this. timing as well it was it? bad timing as if yeah, anything yeah, yeah, and yeah. um so a couple days had passed and i just had a, enough time to digest i tried to lay low a little bit i actually sent a dm to Patton and his wife saying listen it got out of hand my apologies i didn't mean i, I go and i tried to explain what i just explained to you yeah just because you know like I, I, I it got out of hand and he never replied or responded which so. again his prerogative you know, that's like, fine that's but fine, i just yeah. like i you know i lost loved ones and you know and i the brody thing was a low blow and i you know i lost my mom the cancer so i get it and you yeah, know yeah yeah uh so well we, that was that was um i think that's that shows maturity that you wanted to you know go listen i i i whilst i stand by what i think of you creatively i don't you know I just yeah and i got, separated gone after your yeah, friends or family is a you know is an unfair thing to make comments on. And a guy like that has, I, I I do believe in his has a responsibility. I mean, the guy has a large following, mm-hmm. and I think in a sense it's almost punching down. You know, even though I did say that, like, like I remember Louie when he got in trouble, he 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 was going after other comics instead of Louie, and it's just like I I don't know. There's something really gross about that. Like you said, the Napoleon complex. Yeah, sure. It, it, like he's almost he almost enjoyed that. And I and I don't know. That's just my opinion, though. I um, yeah, it's a difficult one because I I feel like, uh, whilst I always believe that if someone acknowledges their mistakes or says that you know uh, maybe I didn't say the right thing or my response was out of it was unfair given the context of what our disagreement was about. Yeah. Um, I feel like that deserves at least an acknowledgement and going fine. I still think you're a fucking prick, but yeah. I I appreciate your apology about that element. But the other part of me, and this is the, this is the, because I'm, I'm, you know what, you know what I am. Yeah. I'm a liberal-minded left-wing guy. I sit left of center. Uh, fucking podcast is called the Savage Snowflake. Yeah. In the sense, that I would be considered a snowflake by anyone on the right wing because I believe in the equality of all fucking people. Blah blah yeah. blah, blah. I'm a whatever a socialist, whatever the fuck they wanted to call me. Yeah. But I'm also savage in the fact that I will point out the absolute cunts over here, you know, over SJW super PC culture, which is destroying any kind of connection a lot of different races even had for each other or different genders or sexualities had for each other. The idea that we can't make jokes with each other. You're able to have a conversation, which a lot of people don't have. I like sitting in a green room with a gay comic, a black comic, a Jewish comic, two female comics, and me, a white straight man. And we fucking shit there. And he goes, well, you know, of course you fucking like the taste of that because white people don't season their food, motherfucker. I'm like, all right, well, you would understand what our food tasted like yeah. if you didn't turn up two hours late because you're black. You know what I mean? Go, oh, well, hang on a sec. Lesbians always turn up on time because they want to make sure, you know, they get the fisting in done before first course. Making jokes like that about ourselves that are generalizations allows us to connect better. That's almost lost now. Whilst I'm still a liberal mind like that, I would like to think I'm... I'm um honest enough to be savage to whoever needs to be savage to whether you're a neo-nazi fuckboy or you're you know an antifa fucking pretending like you're 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 a cause for liberalism yeah so 
the, the snowflake part of me goes, hey man, I feel bad that you got so much hatred and I really think it would have been nice for him to respond when you acknowledge that you fucked up with the comments yeah. about his wife. Uh, Isn't he Brody. anti-bullying too? I mean, it's just sure, you know, sure, sure, and yeah. it's a, it's a, it's at odds with what he's presenting, yeah. which is goes back to your original comment, which is one you stand by and one that I can see some merit to and some truth to. In that, if you're going to present yourself as the anti-bully guy, yeah, don't publicly put a smaller comic, uh, comics tweet up for all your followers to fucking go after. That yeah. was literally you look like a hypocrite now. Look like a hypocrite. However, the other part of me, and this is the savage part of me, goes, motherfucker, if you heckle me, True. I don't care if it's in a club. Or if it's online, I will fucking destroy you. Yeah. And I have. When I used to broadcast on Twitch, you know, one of the reasons I got kicked off, one of the reasons I got kicked off that platform is because when trolls would come to my my community and shit talk me, I would go off on a big fucking monologue about who they are, why they got this sadness sure. in front of them, who hurt them, why they will never amount to anything. And I would destroy. Yeah. And that kid could have potentially been an 11-year-old fucking child just <laughs> trying to be an arsehole because his dad does beat him. And so he's a bully online. And that's what he does. Does. I don't know. I don't know who he was, but here's my point is I believe in we have to have some set of ground rules, which is it doesn't matter how how um small you are, how big you are, how public uh, an entity yeah. you are or not. As soon as sorry, man, it's about you. That's right. As soon as You're you passionate. <laughs> as soon as you put yourself in my life and publicly shit talk me, I have every right to call you a fucking cunt and make you feel like a cunt. Yeah. Publicly. And that's and, but then I'm not a hypocrite because I don't not expect the same thing to happen to me. Yeah, yeah. Or present myself as, you know, oh, no, I'm a super, super PC guy and I'm super SJW and we should never talk mean to people on the internet. That's wrong. I'm not that guy. Right. So it would be okay because it's not at odds with what I believe. No, I, it was definitely a teaching moment. Like, yeah, I, I learned something from that. And it, it's amazing the amount of comics that unfollowed and blocked me. Like, okay. just things people I thought were friends, they just wanted to align themselves with with uh, Patton at that point. Or more, more, they wanted to just not do a detriment to their own career in any way. Yeah. They're like going, fuck, well, if I follow Chad and then Patton sees I follow Chad, it's he so might go, lame. why are you friends? Yeah. It's so lame. Like, I'm fr- I love chaos. I love fucked up individuals. I love people like- I It love- may feel bad. I didn't follow either of you before the whole spat. Fair enough. <laughs> that is good. But that's because I don't know either of you. It's yeah. like my friends. You know, sure. like it's- I'm not going to lie and pretend like- Yeah, no, that's great. No, it's a, uh, like I love shit starters. I like those pe- people. Like I just enjoyed- Like it, it, growing up, I was always attracted to the bad kid class. I just like to say, I'm not close personal friends with Bill Burr either, but I do follow him on social media. Yeah. That's because- you know, he's Bill Burr. Well, he's one of the best comics of well, our I just, generation. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to be accused ever of being a fucking hypocrite. I'm just, no, I'm it's like if you're a fan of somebody, <laughs> I, I get only it. only follow my friends. Like, I follow Chuck D on Twitter. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge Public Enemy fan, so yeah, there you go. I get it. It's like, that's fine. But uh, yeah, so I, I got a couple comments, and I, I and, and somebody actually tweeted the when you talked to Neil, so I watched your your uh, conversation with Neil. And, oh, yeah, yeah, with Neil Brennan, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm friends with his brother, Kevin. Who's, Me uh, too, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. friends with both of them. Imagine what that's like. Yeah, that's uh, that's a very uh, and I used to be friends with Neil. Like I was like I I was a fan of Neil's old podcast, and um, I heard him you know talking ab- about it a little bit. And I don't know if, if it's because I'm friends with his brother, but I, there was a there was a rumor going around that I he said I talked shit on him, which I never did. I like Neil, I really do, and I, I think it's because I'm friends with his brother. So I, I I don't know what the situation is with that, but I just, I mean he didn't want to talk about it in the podcast. I didn't push him on it because I knew that it was like. All right, this is not something he talks about. Yeah. Which I actually kind of, I respected that because <laughs> Kevin so publicly, I think on a daily basis, I see at least three to five tweets from Kevin about how much he fucking hates Neil Brennan. And it's I, it's like they're brothers. That's it's their business. so tiring though. I'm like, <laughs> motherfucker. But he, it's almost part of Neil, uh, uh, Kevin's brand now yeah. to shit talk Neil. It's literally like hashtag star fucker or whatever. It's part of his community's yeah. identity now, you know? Like, so I- when I don't I, like it, but I don't. Right. I don't like when I go out to lunch. I've done gigs with. He never talks about Neil ever. No, nah, he doesn't get on stage. He only and does go, it publicly. His, so. his, yeah, it's very funny because he doesn't get on stage and go, "Hey, here's a tight ten minutes about why I hate my brother, who's you know has a different level of success than me in this industry." Yeah. Um. So, but, I, but I'm going to like who you align yourself yeah. with, or who you like. I I don't. But what you took umbrage to part of the conversation me and Neil had, or yeah, because there was there. I think there was something there. Like I might. I just wanted to publicly say I have nothing against the guy. I, okay. I like. I, I, he doesn't against you either. I don't think he. Oh, his, good. Co- his comment on the podcast was effectively. Uh, I don't think anyone should be engaging in that kind of Twitter spat. I think it's bullshit. Okay, maybe and I took goes, it the wrong way. And he also said his comment was. He said. He said. 
But also because I went, well, neither of them should be involved in it, right? That kind of thing. It doesn't matter whether you're at least presented. I don't even know what your political outlook is. I don't, it doesn't even fucking matter. To yeah, me. that's another thing. I, I was getting accused of being alt right, which I'm not. I'm, sure. I'm a middle guy all the way. Okay, yeah, I yeah. may lean a little right now. I think so many of my uh, so many people that I know in comedy now as well. A lot of them are like libertarian now. They're just going, oh, you know what? I fucking hate both political parties. Yeah. There's, there's a rise in that. I'm certainly a lot more centrist than I was, but I. But it doesn't matter what your political outlook is. I think. You you understand by association with certain things. Look, me going on as a guest on Anthony Cumia's show on the Compound Media right. Network. Uh, liberal followers of mine have questioned why I do that. Why would you ever go on? And just by being a guest on his podcast, exactly. on his show, they assume my political leaning is right wing, conservative, uh, and completely anti political correctness, completely anti progression yep. and equality, uh, fucking white racist, neo Nazi, whatever. And I'm like, motherfuckers, I'm on there to be the other guy. Yeah. And his community have finally embraced me as, ah, Jeff's a bit of a liberal fag, but, you know, yeah. but he's funny and actually he can have a conversation. And I'm presenting a different view to people who might not agree with my political outlook through humor. Right. Um, and that's the way so, you're supposed to do it. Exactly. So Have a conversation. But Neil Brennan's comment, uh, again, I think was was more just a case of going, Okay, but I can't imagine Patton Oswalt have, having started that that back and forth. Right. And he was correcting that. Yeah. You did start because no, no, you yeah. sent a message directly to Patton Oswalt, which basically went, fuck you, I think you're full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> which is, hey, man, I respect the fucking, I respect the, the honesty of it. You're sticking honestly to what you believe. Yeah. And you're like, if I see that. Well, I remember Neil also said, well, who started it? And I know he knew who started it. So he's like, well, there you go. Oh, you didn't? Okay, yeah. yeah. And I said to him, that's a childhood comment. It doesn't matter who started it. Yeah. Neither of them should be involved in it, right? And he was right. like, yeah, exactly. But he wasn't, he didn't have an opinion on it, really. Oh, good. Well, except I, I, that he's comics just, shouldn't spend their time on the internet shit talking. And Neil's to very successful. He's done very well for himself. And But at the same time, like, I just don't want, because I'm associated with certain people. Yeah. For, like, I'm not, just because, I, like Kevin Brennan, like, saying all this shit, like, I, those are his views, not mine. I just think he's funny. So you got a little stuck in the middle of, stuck in the middle of it. Um, well, like you just said, like you go on Kumia show, so they automatically they're trying to box you. Sure. And I feel like I'm getting boxed okay, right now. As what you are. So yeah. Like they're, like they're trying to you know make me some like like because of what I did, like I'm an Owen Benjamin type, you know, like whatever Owen's doing, I don't pay attention. Understood. But yeah. I'm not that guy. Okay. I just but I do stand by what I believe in and my convictions and. You know, if I, I see hypocrisy, I see bullshit, I'll call it out. And that's what it is, you know. And it, it may go against the grain and what, what you're supposed to do in this town, but, you know, you're I mean, an East Coast guy. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm East Coast in London, you know, and we're, we're always very honest. And in fact, in both. And I respect that a ton. I wish the industry did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's the deal, man. Like, you got your own pirate ship. You don't need that. No, exactly. I'm, I'm literally, um, yeah, floating in the, the waves between both camps. Plus, uh, you're uh, tall uh, and you got long hair. So that. Oh, there's even more reasons to fucking hate me. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, normally, I wear jewelry, which suggests my parents never hug me. Yeah. I look like a douchebag. I get it. But that's okay. <laughs> I've embraced that. But I, this is the thing is that, and then this is what I, what I was interested in getting to the crux of is. It's okay to feel all those things and to have those things, but you also have to be you have to be um, comfortable with the reaction to your actions. Yes, that's that's you're right, and that's that's something I I, I was not like necessarily comfortable with the patent reaction because no. I didn't think it was going to be like what it was, and, and that many people being arseholes to you because yeah. they felt like you were going after a. a a public figure that they like. Yeah, and it made me, it, it, it soured me, and it made me not want to be a follower to anything at that point. I'm like, why would this gang mentality, how's this attractive on any side? Because people want to belong. So if they can belong to a, a community of a small group of people who they feel like they're part of the mob, that individually we can be incredibly, uh, what's the famous quote by Socrates or someone like that? It's from the age old. Like, you know, uh, Nothing is more stupid than the voice of the people, or something to right. Uh, like, um, uh, 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 um, if you take uh, one wise man and uh, make him part of a crowd, you'll have a crowd of unwise men, or something to that effect. Right, right. You know, people can be very when they, when you talk to them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, they can be very human. They can you can understand that there's shades of grey yeah. in who they are and what their personality is. As soon as you get a big group of people together, they just go, "Well, I believe this." They go, "Yeah, me too. Yeah, 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 yeah." And they want to they want to belong. Yes. So you know, they'll like when they they'll profess to be overt liberals who believe in what 
Patton presents as his public persona, which is all inclusivity, no bullying. But then as soon as someone goes after him, they will respond with hatred rather and hypocrisy. And like even when I saw the takedown of Louis C.K., which I thought was disgusting and gross about how, you know, what happened to him? Because well, a lot of people, I mean, I don't know where you stand on this. I'm sure you have addressed it and talked about it. But a lot of people were like, we're just... So vaguely, yeah. yeah. I, have, I have mixed feelings about Louis. Yeah, yeah. And they were going after him. And where was the empathy that he has two daughters that has to read these headlines? Sure. Like, there's nobody was thinking about that. Sure. And they, and well, I think the lack of frustration there is really that like, his daughter's quite young anyway. So they could be shielded from a reasonable amount of it. But also, the man is, uh, you know, just because he lost out on making another 30 million dollars or whatever because of you know things he'd done in the past um who cares the man was already a multi-millionaire many times over with a huge amount of uh capital to his name he hasn't lost any of that right certainly as far as i know didn't donate a load of money or anything like that to rectify but i've seen our peers publicly just just shit on the guy not knowing the exact story of what actually happened but there was it was you know it got swept into this me too movement of he was thrown in the same discussion as jared fogel and bill cosby like it's like no they're separate situations like you need to look at it that way and i just thought it was gross i mean and they're calling the women victims. I mean, I think having to see Louis C.K.'s dick is gross. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, outside of whether it's an assault or not, I, I wouldn't want to see his his little ginger penis coming out. Do you know what I mean? And that was... I reckon it's like an angry, like an angry head, like a really big angry mushroom head. I don't want to see any penis, just for the record. I, I, I like seeing mine. <laughs> I'm into it. I like I like my own cock. I'll, I'll sometimes just catch myself glancing out in the mirror when I come out of the shower, just longingly. Like, hey, up how I- going, wow, look at that. That's the most gorgeous two and a half inches of anything I've ever seen in my life. Um, no, my point is, but well, well, hang on a sec. Well, then let me throw it. Let me play devil's advocate. Because uh, this is what I like doing. And it allows me to understand you better and your outlook better. You didn't like a pu- very public takedown of of a comedian that you respect and, yeah. that you, and that you didn't think was deserving of it. And yet you offered up your personal one man takedown of a comic. That yeah. is, do you see the, where I'm... I'm a hypocrite. It's, <laughs> I'm saying it feels like there's a little bit of hypocrisy yeah. and outlook of what how you want to be treated versus how you would treat other people. Yeah, I, I just... I just I, For I've, both of you, you and Patton, by the way, there's a little hypocrisy I feel on both sides of the pro- camera. Probably, and I like I, I wanted to learn a little bit more about. I, I really wanted to. Like, that was like I said, a teaching moment, learning yeah. a little bit about, you know, where where I was wrong too. Yeah, and I I, I don't know Patton or Oswald's life. I don't know. He could have. He could have. He could have. Fucking five years ago, or something like that. You know, when his wife passed away, been going through like major emotional stress, upset, whatever was going on. I don't know because I don't know his story. But he could have had a moment in his career where he was fucking losing projects and shit was going wrong and he was like feeling really low. Yeah. And then he went, I'm going to make a really concerned effort to play the game of the industry. And I have to because I've got to pay my rent and I don't know if he's got kids, but I got to get the kids an education or whatever the fuck yeah. it is. I got to do these things and that's how I'm going to be. And he made a decision, conscious decision to do, to, to do that. Now, it might publicly appear very hypocritical and, and, and disingenuous. But if he's doing it for a reason like that, and this, again, is like going understanding the whole story of someone. Same with Louis. I think Louis pulling his dick out in front of chick. Like, Louis uses power in a creepy way. He's a pervert. Yeah. I don't think he's a, a rapist. He's, I don't think he's a... Uh, his, his, his form of sexual assault is, would be quite considered quite mild upon the spectrum of what could have happened. Uh, it doesn't mean that reception might not be more serious for different women based on what their own personal experiences yeah. have been. Again... And this is the problem. No one looks at the shades of grey on both sides of the fence. Yes, Louis is a great comic. I think he should still be allowed to do stand-up. Yes. I think he is a fucking moron. And it's not indicative of his intelligence that I felt he had. I think he's a fucking moron not to come back to comedy and really honestly and openly address him being a pervert in his jokes. Well, he is. And then go, hey, by the way, also, let me play the game a little bit. I'm going to do th- a few things. I'm going to talk about being a fucking perv in my comedy and acknowledge it. I'm also, I'm a fucking multi-millionaire many times over. Here's a million dollars donated to a women's domestic abuse charity. I'm, I'm I'm playing some reparations to show that I acknowledge what I did was wrong. And he didn't do that. He but, went the complete opposite way and went, Jeff, went, fuck it. If you don't like me anymore, fuck you. Jeff, he took like, a year off. Uh, he He went away for a year. 
and he wrote that apology. Yeah. He legitimately already apologized. I mean, I don't know how many times you have to apologize. Sure. Then he comes back to Santa. But again, subjective re- responses to an apology. You know, everyone's going to have a different level of whether they accept it or not. What was the longest you know? period of time that you didn't do stand up when you were actively doing stand up? Like, oh, I mean, like, if I can go, if I go a day without doing stand up, I get it fidgety. But, but yeah, maybe um, I don't know, a couple of weeks. Or I something took a month like. off once, and you imagine getting back on stage, like you're, you're trying to get your legs sure, back. Sure, it's sure, like taking, sure. you know, like if you were out at the gym he quit working out sure. so he had to get his legs under him and mm-hmm. from what i understand i have a couple friends that have has opened for him he's he's addressing that now in his act but he wasn't comfortable enough there's like a th- thing in my life that happened and i'm still trying to figure out how to make it funny i haven't addressed it on stage because sure. i don't know how to make it funny so you got to give louis the benefit of the doubt and that audio that was leaked. i understand what you're saying he also that I, I wouldn't have said that if i didn't consider louis ck one of one of my favorite comedians of all time I know he's clever. I also know his his work ethic when it comes to comedy is writing an hour every single year. Yeah. So for me, the idea that he can't write just a really well written, funny, self deprecating five minute bit that addresses his past, uh, dis, you know, a behavior. He has a really good joke. I don't want to blow it. But you'll hear it once it's the finished product's presented. Not some guy tape recording him in a comedy club. It's not club. the. It's not the. Hey, how was your year? You know. Oh God, I. 36 million blah blah blah, blah yeah. like you know or the only people who support you are black people it's not that whole bit well no he he cuz that by the way it doesn't ingratiate there's me two to sides of that story and i've heard both sides from what you know uh and he got railroaded. I mean, he use a perf. He's creepy, whatever. He said, Dude, I asked a girl if I could put my balls in her mouth once. Okay. And she, she did. But it's like, he's that's his thing. And he apologized. Oh, wait, you asked her and she said, yeah, I'd like to do that. Yeah. That's a big difference. But yeah, we were just. You get what I'm saying? Well, he, 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 the girls did have consent. The one said that was wrong from what I understand. Yeah, and he and apologized. One, and also the one on the, uh, yeah, the one on the phone where he's just jerking off while she was having yeah. a conversation and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm getting the man's a fucking pervert. I don't think he's like. I don't think a woman would be have to be physically threatened by him generally, but he has power and affluence and can use that. And he was certainly one the poster boy of comedy for the period of time leading up to him, people finding out. But I, I, I mean, that aside, it's more a case of just going. He's a big boy. You, you do, you do something. You do an action like that. Yeah. There will be a reaction. The reaction is women going, go fuck yourself. And, and people who don't like his behavior going, go fuck yourself. And then uh, people with placards outside his shows. And you just go, go, I think he's an idiot because I think he's got better business acumen yeah. than a guy who doesn't know. Get on stage, say sorry again when you come back and make jokes at your own expense because you're super fucking clever. He could even word it so as that he's not even acknowledging more fault, but he's still making fun of the fault he already acknowledged mm-hmm. prior. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. feel like he just fucked up. He just, he just, someone- well, He's always been kind of a fuck up. Like I, I heard stories that he bought a car and- he he basically like lost the key, so he just left the car. Like he's always done stupid things, driving without. He's a reckless guy. Like he's always been kind of, from what I understand. I've only met the guy once. He so flies I, by the seat of his pants, unless his hand are down the seat of his pants. Yeah. yeah. Without that all being said, like I I, I want to get back to the gang like culture and the mentality of comics. Like Louis C.K. has helped out a lot of comedians, and I saw a lot of comedians turn their back on him sure. when that was going down. Yeah. Sure. And I just I just don't like these mob well, mentalities. Those, those, but those comics who turn their back on Louis C.K very publicly and not even comics I imagine that Louis C.K. gave a solitary fuck about yeah because they weren't his friends they weren't people who knew him they weren't people who'd been around him the ones who were his friends like even Sarah Silman someone who could do a lot of detriment to her career because she's so uh, identifiable as you know a strong female in the industry feminist progressive you know left wing liberal minded and yet she went on a couple of shows and said you know I gave Louis permission to jerk off in front of me a couple of times because I thought it was funny and who cares if that gets him off, why yeah. not, you know? And he did shit like that and it was okay with a lot of people and I feel like some of these girls might have said yes to that thing yeah. and not expect him to do it, but who's to blame there? Them for giving him the consent and then him doing it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they didn't think he would or him for being having power and using that against women. It's a gray area and she got in big trouble for that. And then had to sort of renounce her comments. And, go, and by the way, I'm not, I'm not. I'm, but no, but she wants to keep her fucking career. You know, Sarah yeah. Silverman has to continue getting those stem cell implants. So she looks 21 and smoking hot every fucking year. She does look pretty hot. She's fucking, what, 50 something yeah. now? And she looks about 21. Anyway, whatever. I would make love to her too. I mean, I, I feel like she'd probably turn <laughs> us both down, mate. But, but you understand what I'm saying? She has to look after her career. But even people who did come publicly out and support him, it was a, you had to be a mega star and be very careful about what you said to be able to do that. So, of course, all these smaller comics are going, 
fuck the ECK because they want to feel like they're part of the movement. Yeah. I never. I, I made a joke about it. Yeah. I, so I made. A, I made a joke about him jerking off. Basically, I made, did a, a joke, which is I think the right way to do it. Make a joke about it. Yeah. Make fun of and it. And as fuck. a comic, I bet he he would respect that you made a joke about yeah, it. He fuck wouldn't. It. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fuck yeah. I mean, whatever it was, you know. But but you understand, like, we're in an industry of fakers, and it's hard to have like a real opinion, and it's 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 frustrating. Like you know, it's like. Because a lot of the things I say aren't very popular, and right. and I'm often judged by that. But at the end of the day, I'm a, I have a good heart. I, I care about comics. I want to take care of comics. But I got into this because I have opinions. I don't want to follow trends and necessarily say what's the popular thing to say. Going back to Pat Oswalt, sure. I, I was like, that's not why I got into this. I mean, I like Bill Hicks. I like those guys. These fucking rebel rousers and to look like you know. Let, let's let's use an example word. from now though. No rebel rousing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you like people who mix it up, and I like that, and I, so do I. The, all my favorite comics, the Greg Geraldos, yeah. the George Carlin's, the Lenny Bruce's, the Joan Rivers, these are all people who went, fuck you, and broke down broke down barriers and yeah. allowed people to talk about more and in a very uh, in more ways. Uh, Richard Pryor. I mean, like, God, yeah. f- these guys are legends, um, and that's what I'm into too. However, I also know that... A lot of people, when we get to a point where we're so focused, and I've been guilty of this. This is what part of my conversation with Neil was about and Paul Provenza on the previous episode. I didn't realize that was is, him, by the way. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, now you've ruined the, the magic of the fourth wall that this is a completely different day. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's the same day. It's I mean, the this is the last week when I saw him. But they were out. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly. You saw him four days ago. This is coming out on a Thursday. That was a Sunday. It's all right. It's all good. And now I fucked that up. And now I, yeah, now confused, confusion is setting. Anyway, my point being... You hit a point where you go, it, the more energy I put into just pointing out the shit that I hate, the duality of, of what someone presents themselves as versus what they really like, the hypocrisy, the two-faced nature of the industry, uh, virtue. Is this what you said or Neil over, said? I'm, this is a, a, he said it. I've said it. Paul said it. We, this is the thing I'm starting to believe. I completely agree with you. Going, the more time I spend fucking shitting on what I hate, Right. It makes me angry, makes me sad. It makes me frustrated about said injury. And I'm trying to implement, not because it's false, but because it's healthier for me, an attitude of going, I'm going to start talking about people that I love. Like, I know you love Sam Tripoli. He's one of your favorite yeah, comics. Yeah, he's one of my friends. best friends. There you go. And he's one of your best friends. Yeah. And, uh, you know, instead of going, fuck you, Pat Nosma, yeah. you talentless hack vacuous two-faced fucking I never bullshit just, nah 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 I'm just adding yeah. a few in for you mate that's right that's what you would have said if you had an English public school <laughs> education sir but you get what I'm saying yeah you go and fuck you Pat Oswald I don't believe a word you say if like you, I thought like Fahim Anwar should be a big star he's a phenomenal comic well, there we go if you said like oh check out this clip of my buddy Fahim Anwar who's fucking like really telling it who it is I love his brutal honesty of comedy. He's an amazing comic. That will, I think, even make more people who think the same way you do about comedy and about um, the way we should express ourselves and freedom of speech uh, to be more attracted to you. You know, you can get a few people who will go, yeah, I fucking hate Pat Oswalt too. But it's a bad thing to bond over your with your audience. Yeah, because yeah. Because it's uh, focused on a negative, I think. Yeah, no, there's something to be said about that too. And my problem is, is I've, I've never been very good at playing the game. Like I, if if I'm I like asking, you, and this is where I'm saying I'm not asking you to play a game. Yeah, I'm asking you to change your fucking stance. Yeah, on the on the on the mound. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you don't have to pretend like that's how you always want to do it. You just have to go. Hey, maybe I'm going to start swinging for a different area. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just turn that negative into a positive. And by the way, dude, I am a hundred percent guilty. I have talked about Russell Brand being a prick on this podcast on a number of occasions. I've had a little um, uh, problematic, not. I, don't, I have no hatred towards him, but I got ghosted by Chris D'Elia for this podcast. It's so weird. Chris did? Yeah, and it feels it felt like a real um, like a real uh, like a real big balling thing as well. It was very strange. We were arranging a date, and then it got changed, and it made me go. It made me go. Fuck. Do I have to reevaluate who I think this guy is? Because I thought he was a cool dude, and now I'm getting the impression he likes making lesser known comics feel like shit. That's, no, but you get what I'm I saying. I like Chris for but, the record. Oh, dude, I liked him an awful lot. I wanted him to be a guest. I started with him. But you understand that this is my issue is that I go, all right, well, like, I've, I've been guilty of talking in a public setting on yeah. my own platform about negative relationships with other comics. But I'm, you know, I'm 35 and I'm still developing as a person and sure. as, a, as a creative. And you should be too, in, in the respect that I go, well, maybe it's not about going, well, I'm going to be disingenuous. Right. By not saying that I fucking hate something, I'm being disingenuous. It's going, no, no, no. 
tell me the shit that you love because I'm much more interested in knowing what Chad Zumok loves about comedy or which comics he thinks are un- uh, underrated or which what clip is something that made you cry with fucking laughter yeah that to me is infinitely more interesting no and I do that and I always try to I think to- Patton Oswalt's a fucking two-faced cunt <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> you know what I'm saying bro yeah. I'm being honest with you no no I and I often and I do that too if you follow me on social media like if there's somebody I like I'll like promote well, I do them now, yeah 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 like I, I um I, I'll promote them like obviously I'm not just gonna shit on people but at the same time like actually the day I followed you once that spat had gone on you said you wanted to come to the podcast Patton Oswalt sent me a DM saying I will never work with you you will never <laughs> no he didn't he didn't do that In he fact, did not do that in he fact, I'm going to tell Chris D'Elia not to show up. Yeah, he said, me and Chris are <laughs> laughing together. We just opened a, 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 we opened a 25-year bottle of scotch together just yeah. to celebrate. And Chris doesn't even drink. Maybe Chris That's is intimidated. Irony. He doesn't even drink. Because you guys are both tall and you have long hair. Maybe, Maybe. he's intimidated. Maybe, but I don't think he's, he's like, this is my area, pal. At this point, I've accepted that it could be his insecurity and him wanting to make me feel like shit. And it could be based on that. Or it could be a complete case of just he was so busy and I kept going, reaching out and being like, yo, dude, we were meant to arrange a date and you never got back to me. Just a little nudge on this. And he just had a bad day and went, fuck this guy. I don't know, I don't know him. He's not my friend. Why is he... And that's probably more likely. That's infinitely more likely. He was busy and just I'm not going to speak with it. Speak, uh, I know Chris, but I'm not going to speak for him. But I remember a long time ago, I asked him to do the podcast and I ran him to the store and he goes... I owe you a text. I'm sorry, man. I, it's, yeah, yeah, So yeah. it might have been a situation yeah. like that. Well, I'm getting used to how Americans are and also American entertainers because you are very different to British people. Yeah. When we go, all right, I'll come and do your podcast. Go, great. Date, time, where, location. Boom, boom. It's in the dark. We're very efficient in I'm that I'm the same respect. way. Like you told me 3 p.m. I was here at 2.59. I know. I'm sorry. I was, we overran slightly. That's all right. Paul. That was Paul's fault and that's because he was high as fucking balls. Yeah, yeah. Which was a great great experience <laughs> i Hearing, can't wait to watch watching it. paul provenza i spent the entire hour being concerned that he was going to lean so far back on that chair because he cranked it all the way back and he was like leaning and bouncing and touching the microphone every 12 seconds he was banging the microphone and i'm like this is either going to sound like shit or yeah. he's going to fall off that chair and it's going to be a hilarious clip yeah and neither neither of the things happened i think it was a good sound <laughs> If anything good came out of this, I found out about your podcast and I watched I watched the one with Jesse May. Oh, Luzo. she's so fucking she's funny. The shit. Yeah. Well, look, Jesse May and me. Here you go. Here's the thing. Here's an interesting thing. And like, you know, this is you can get people wrong. Yeah. You don't know. He, Pat Oswald doesn't know what your personal story is. We never do. And as comics, we have to fight against that a little bit because here's the issue. If we care about what every single audience member's personal story could be, mm-hmm. then we would never be allowed to joke about anything. Right. Okay? That's true. And I'm a big believer that you should be able to make a joke about anything. And if someone's personal subjective response to that is to be very upset, they should talk to you after the show and go, hey, here's a thing, by the way. And it might make me rethink the way I tell the joke or the or an element of the joke. Sure. You know? But it's important that you have that conversation outside of the artistic space and let that free speech happen. Yeah. But in the same way, you don't know what Pat and Oswald's story was. Me and Jesse used to be um, very close friends, and we, you know, and and we, and then we had a we had a bust up, you know, and we didn't speak for a year, pretty really? much. Yeah, yeah. And we had a bust up, and we weren't friends for a while, and it was so stupid. And we were both just in a place where we had a disagreement about something that really didn't matter that much, and wasn't wasn't an important thing. It was a very correctable situation. It was, yeah. And it was just, she was going through some very hard stuff. I was in a place of, up, you know, it was when I first moved to LA and it was a bit of turmoil and I was going through some stuff. When did you move here, by the way? And uh, A year and a half ago. Okay. And she and I reconnected, talked, and then she came and did the podcast and we talked more. And now I booked her on a few shows and she's doing some stuff. And, and I've got my friend back. Yeah. And it's really great. But that was someone who for a year... I just had a similar situation with a, a friend back home in Cleveland. We didn't talk for three years and we... We just aired it out, yeah. and now you're, you're, you're... But what I would never have done... What? Is... Who made the initial is reach make, out? It was kind of both of us. We saw each other in an event, and I just went, hey, man, I think I said, I really, you know, I really miss hanging yeah. out with you. Yeah. I miss laughing with you. And she was like, me too. We should do it. And I said, well, come and do the podcast, and we'll we'll make it happen. We'll have a good conversation about stuff, you know? Oh, that's she was cool. like, oh, wow, nice. Yeah, let's do that. And then... But, but um, sorry, it was, wasn't to talk about our personal relationship. It was more just to point out the fact that it was. It could have been so easy for me to misread the situation, her to misread it, us to continue doing that, to push further apart, shit talk each other in the industry, and that was never going to be a thing that we had to do. Same with Chris D'Elia. Yeah. I don't know what was going on with him personally. 
was it frustrating he couldn't call him right now if you wasn't want. it frustrating i don't want to do that actually no <laughs> wasn't it frustrating that he couldn't reach out and send me a message and go listen man look yo you you keep asking me about this date i know i was going to send you a date but I, i've got too much shit going on let's just fucking take a break if he just let me know that i wouldn't have ever reached out again i would be okay no worries bro but we're also but comics. Didn't. We're very sensitive. I'm hypersensitive. All- I assume he's trying to get one over on me or he hates me for some reason oh, yeah. that I don't know. And I'm like, come on, man. I thought we were, we bonded over the fact that we weren't susceptible to that bullshit. We're not intimidated by each other. That's literally what we bonded over on Twitter. Yeah. Was, yeah. was um, me bing- binging him up. Him, Brendan Schaub, um, uh, uh, um, uh, Brian Callen, Theo Vaughn. I just love what they're doing together. And I love that they're supporting each other. And they... They're not intimidated by... And they're dudes. They're alpha men yeah. doing stuff, creating, achieving. And instead of being uh, insecure about their strength and pushing... Oh, fuck that guy. He's he's doing well as well. I don't want to associate with him. I want to get that fucking... Yeah. They go, no, let's work together. Let's make each other more successful. And I love that. And I still do. I still think I have respect and admiration for him. Is it frustrating that he never fucking sent yeah. back? But rather than go like, I'm not going to hit him up on Twitter and be like, yo, fuck you, Chris D'Elia. All I've done is very publicly on our podcast a couple of times said it hurt me. It was it made yeah. me feel vulnerable and a little bit upset and insecure. And I didn't like that feeling, man. Well, yeah, we, we all feel that way, though. Like, and I feel I, like even you and Patton, that's what's happening now. Yeah, like I, there was one day I was going to go up to the comedy store and I saw that he was on the lineup. I'm like, I'm not going there. Like, I don't want to be like, I don't know if he's going get, to get, have me thrown out. Like, you start thinking all this stuff. Even when I go to comedy clubs now, I'm like... Were they friends with Patton? Maybe did they, well, how are they looking at me? Like I'm ultra sensitive to the situation. Yeah. Like I have, I have, I think people like have feelings about me now. Absolutely. And I, but yeah, they formed opinions that you don't feel honestly reflect who you actually are. Yeah. So it, it's, but a lot of it's in my head. Like a lot of people like probably don't even give a fuck. Like, oh look, no, dude, I've seen the Reddit forums. They fucking hate you. <laughs> no, no, it's I'm, true. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I have a not seen any Reddit forums uh, about the yeah, spat. It's not, it's also, not. bear in mind this, Chad. Yeah. And. In a week, another week from today, no one online gives a solitary fuck about you and Pat and Oswald Bait Beef. Well, it's it's that's it the cool thing so about to this day and age with the news cycle. It just gets brushed away. See, I hate that. I I do like people being able to things being able to move on, but I hate that. For instance, this is one of my only gripes with my own political standpoint, the liberal left. I hate that we're all excited and upset about a concept or a thing that's going on, something in politics or something in social climate or something in the media. We're upset about it so voraciously. It's a hashtag. Everyone cares. Millions of signatures for a week. Yeah. And then it's for gone. Mm -hmm. And no one ever loops back to go, hey, did we ever actually see that thing through? Yeah. Did we ever see that thing through? And they don't. And that's a a gripe I have with... with, um, with the modern day society. We, right. ca- we care about things for a week and then we no longer care. Not to go down this wormhole, but uh, uh, Donald Trump will win again. I'm just telling you. Dude, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm you saying. know what? And as a man who, who hopes that, that was, that's not the truth, I'm actually quite uh, in agreement with you. Well, I who's think, the candidate, guys? I know, You've been I doing know. a lot of bitching. I know. Where's the candidate? I know, I know, I know. I know. And, uh, no, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. And I agree. Yeah. And, I, and I'm sad to say that I agree because yeah. I think he's a fucking moron and I hate him. Yeah. But I... I agree. Yeah, I agree, man. I got there's that side of me that likes him being president because I like that side being mad. It makes me laugh. I don't know why. Maybe that's the see. I can't agree <laughs> only because I, I, I like him. I like that we've had to reevaluate politics and how much we care about politics and how we make our voices heard. Yeah. I like that it's at least activated people's political interest in some respects, even if it's just a bitch online like fucking twelve year olds and go back and forth with bots. But a lot of these people are just headline readers, and that's it. They're not sure. really doing their homework. I mean, most people in the world are because they're not educated enough to understand the intricacies of politics or government. Yeah. But I also. Yeah, I also, I, whilst I like that it's stirred out the kind of thing, I do think that he, he doesn't care about the people of this country in any way, shape, or form. And it's all about money and business for him. And, and I, I think that, the I feel like the Republican voting demographic are, there's obviously a lot of people who loved him from the off who love him even more now. Yeah. Yeah, he really said it how it is, man. Sticking it to the man. Fuck yeah. Fuck those liberal piece of libtards, you know? But then there's, I think, a lot of his voting demographic who've gone, no, actually, I think he's doing now a lot of things that harm the country, and I'm a, I'm a patriot, mm-hmm. and I don't think he's patriotic. And the more that people realize that, then that could swing things. But I don't think there's a, there's there's no candidate that's strong enough to, to, I think the whole system to go up stinks. against him. I think they should blow up the whole system and start over. Uh, yeah, well, that might fall apart. Look, look what happened in England with Brexit. Yeah. Look, look how well that works, just leaving something that's been in, you know, 
established. I'm not saying there wasn't a huge amount of things wrong with the Brit uh, Britain's relationship with the EU. Yeah. You know, we had things to change. Absolutely. There's tons of stuff that I agree with uh, that the leavers cared about. But unfortunately, they didn't have a fucking plan. And I knew that too. And I was like, mm. motherfuckers, we leave now. If you just leave, we're fucked. Economically, we're fucked. Politically, we're fucked. And then they're going, oh shit, we are. Mm. And now all the leavers who voted for Brexit are now trying to undo it too. And now the government is going, no, no, no. We're going to stick with this because it's about money. It's all about money. All about money, isn't it? Yeah. Um, do you feel, so like, do you, what, what, what would you have liked to have, out? what would you like to be the outcome of this kind of spat you know, is it, is it, that's it now? It's just, I guess we now block each other. We never speak again. Uh, I would like my career to be officially ended so I can, no, I'm just, no. <laughs> nah, you don't wish that, do you, man? And by saying that, you're you're highlighting that there's a, there's a small part of you that is genuinely fearful that, that, oh, that this could have a bigger impact than I've already career. lost out on something big that I can't, I don't want to talk about. Sure. And, and I, I am 90% uh, sure it was because of this do you regret it then having that spat with him Be now that i didn't get this this thing and i know it was directed towards that sure i i, I do regret that because that's something i wanted so you don't regret it because of a personal feeling that maybe i went around by the wrong no because i direct message him i like I, I i i sat and i thought about making that you know joke sure and i felt bad because you know it's just like i lost a loved one i had empathy to that situation yeah so i directed i sent them that message just so also, i didn't by the way when you said you said you tried to help with the brody thing were you when you made that comment were you genuine that brody you were of the yeah. opinion that brody doesn't like him oh well, he told me okay <laughs> and right. I'm, I'm, I, but then again I shouldn't say that because Brody's not you're, here. You're using Brody's name to, and yeah. Bro Brody in no way, shape, or form would have liked you sending that tweet. No, probably not. No. Uh, and that's that's where I was mad because it's like Brody meant a lot to me as a yeah. person, and I, I should not have done that. But I was in hurt mode. Yeah. Like you hurt did me. Did you delete like, them or did you leave them up because? You oh, had I deleted stand, them. By the way, I deleted them just because I didn't want that. Like sure. it, I, what it became was something I did not want. Okay. So I guess what I want from all of this, I, I mean, like I said, it was a teaching moment, but at the same time, like I. I like I love comedy. Like I just want to do comedy, and that's it. And I, I I don't want that taken away from me. Yeah. And I mean, you don't have you know a tight twenty about how much you hate Patton Oswalt. That's not part of your act, is it? No, so, I didn't really. Honestly, I I, I didn't. What care. I'm saying is, your comedy is not defined by your no your you know the kind of the, the online spat or anything like that. Yeah, I'm the uh, Patton Oswalt hater comic. It's like <laughs> I don't care. No, but that's you know that's that's the that's the worry, isn't it? Going oh well because he had this spat. He only thinks about things this way or whatever. Which is yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, but I, I know for for a fact that I'm not gonna like, be, I'm, I'm not gonna blindly throw tweets out, even if I have feelings. With like you said, you better know the repercussions and you better be prepared for it. You which gotta, I you got to go. Is this worth putting out there? And yeah, see and it wasn't. Yeah. At the end of the day, none of it was. And uh, I, I, you know, like you said, it's gonna be dead and gone. Hopefully, but there are people. Yeah, yeah it will. It take it, whether it takes a week or a month, it will go. And then you'll, they'll move on to something new to hate. You know? There were comics that formed opinions about me because of this. But if anything good came out of it, I had some pretty high respected comics come to my defense when they saw that. So okay. I, I, that gave me some more hope that, you know, okay, I'm, I'm fine. I'm going to be okay. Because yeah. These are powerful comics. They're like, I got your back. It's cool. You just made a bad joke. You didn't threaten anyone. So that's where I stand. But I just want to be able to do stand-up comedy without, well, I guess we're all going to live in fear. But Yeah, no, I appreciate that. You don't want to. You don't want to feel like people will derail the way that you perform or come to your shows or anything like that, unless they're there to laugh and to take it at face value. Yeah, yeah. I want to get booked at the improv. I don't want like a page or them not giving me spots because of this. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I, that's not my intent. I'm not trying to go off the grid and burn down the system and uh, you know rally rage against the machine. I'm just you know I have opinions. But a part of you wouldn't like that though. I, I like that. I like that. Yeah. If that, <laughs> imagine if that had been the outcome. Imagine if suddenly a whole load of people that didn't like Patton Oswalt came out of the woodwork, established people, and suddenly decided they were going to be open about the fact they thought he's like two faced, whatever, and they went after him and they blah, 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 and your tweets were being supported rather than attacked yeah. in that way. Would you be sitting here now going, actually, you know, I've reflected on it and I think maybe they were a little harsh? Or would you be going, yeah, I took that motherfucker down? Well, a lot of people told me, like, you would be, they told me to double down on this situation. They're like, double down, go all in. And I'm like, I, I don't really want to go all in. <laughs> like, this wasn't, I didn't want this you to be You have to do thing. what's honest, especially based yeah, exactly. on what you've said. You have to do what is honest and, um, 
and I wasn't trying to make a vulnerable. name for myself through this. This was never part of the plan. Like, okay, I'm going to go shit on Pat, and, and next thing you know, I'm going to get this these people on my side. Again, I still completely, I do not 100% believe that in any way, shape, or form. Sorry, I'm going to be honest, and I'm because I'm always truthful. Yeah. I don't agree with that. I, I think, saw the tweet. I think you made a comment about a very famous public person in comedy because you wanted people to see that you, you're you in the camp of, nah, 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 I'm not in that fucking I virtue did. signaling. SHW. That's why you did it. And you wanted... I did for my followers, but there I, you go. You I wanted, didn't want this to be the defining moment of like, I'm going to get this. But you absolutely sent it for a, a response for more people to yeah. be in your camp who agree with you. I, I did it for a response, but not that big of a yeah, response. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, didn't, you didn't write it about some open mica who does the same thing. Yeah. You wrote it about Patton Oswalt, who you have no really any kind of direct personal dealings with. No. So you did... Yeah, yeah. That's why That's why I don't completely believe that it wasn't right. for a response. Well. And is that fair? <laughs> that's fair, right? I, there's, it's, there's, I, I, there's a lot of truth in what you're saying, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, but I think it got out of control. Though. But it also takes a lot of balls and also maturity to come and go. Some of what I did, some of what I said and the way I went about it was wrong. Yeah. And, uh, and also going, hey, it's been a, an interesting lesson to yeah. develop who I am as a comic and as a person. But I do stand by he's a Hollywood suck ass. So I stand I, by hey, that one. Not. <laughs> Fucking, I wish I was a bit more of one. Yeah, I know. Imagine what, imagine what opportunities I'd have at my doorstep by now. I know. I I feel like this weird. Uh, I'm keep it real. This 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 I, this pressure to keep it real, but at the same time, it's just like you know I, that'd be pretty cool to live in the hills. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to live in the fucking hills. I don't want to live anywhere near Hollywood. That's why I want, I want to be successful enough not to have to live anywhere near fucking Hollywood. Yeah, that's why I want to be. Successful. I want to make enough money and get the fuck out of here. I want to move out and be somewhere private and nice. And no one fucking knows where I live. And uh, dude, one day, one day. All right, man. Dude, well, this was thanks. great. Yeah, I. I uh, well, I'm, I'm glad you got a chance a to like fan. have. Uh, thanks, dude. I'm glad you got a chance to have. A little bit more of a conversation. It's it's the same thing that like what I, I'm not saying we'll heal everything, man. But I did have Kurt Metzger on when he was talking about the Lewis J Gomez spat, and you know what happened after that? He phoned him that evening. He phoned him, and they had a conversation, and that was the beginning of their friendship again. And now Kurt Metzger will be performing at the Skank Fest in New York City. I'm gonna be at Skank Fest. There you go. So are you. And guess who's not gonna be there? The one guy who rectified their friendship, me. Luis J. Gomez, I'm calling you. <laughs> no, but that's that, that's a guy I, I would not want to have. A, shall I start beef with Lewis now? I can't. Be I would not want to have a beef with. Lewis I can't J. be fucked with that because then we'll have to organize an octagon match, and I haven't got the time, the energy, <laughs> nor the core strength. Um, I uh, yeah, no, no. I I, w I wish I was at Legion of Skanks. I don't know why they don't book me. I don't know. Maybe they hate me. Big J does always make jokes about how I look like what he wishes he looked like when he looks in the mirror. <laughs> so maybe maybe it's Big J all along. He always acts very sweet. He invited me to barbecues and stuff. He's a nice guy. But he's I think ma maybe secretly he's fucking, he's secretly trying to derail my com comedy yeah. career because he's like, only I should be allowed to dress like a 15-year-old emo boy. Only I. Not this British red well, coat piece of shit. texted him and said not to have you on. So I think it's <laughs> like a, it's a big thing. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> now, you know what? That thing, I think it will line itself out. I did notice uh, at the comedy store when I was at Brody's, I was performing at Brody's um, Festival of Friendship. Yes. Uh, fundraiser, charity fundraiser. And I did a set and, um, and Chris was there. And I noticed, I noticed him out the corner of my eye, walk through, and he was talking to me. And I think, and I saw him see me and kind of step aside and get into a different conversation, so he wouldn't have to conflict. We wouldn't, well, so we wouldn't have to look at each other uh, directly in the eye and be like, "Hey, what's, this. hey, what's up, man?" Um, and all that's all it would have been. I would have been like, "Hey, what's up, dude?" And I probably would have been like, yeah. and yeah. he probably would have gone, yeah. and then we would have laughed, and then I would have just fucking left. Right, right. I mean, like, I've got no beef with the man. Sure. Hey, maybe we could, let's do this. Let's both put into practice, whilst you don't like Patton Oswalt necessarily or the way he goes about his business, it clearly works for him and he's very successful. Maybe if you ever see Chris, uh, if you ever see Patton Oswalt, you'll reach out and say, hey man, Let's talk, because I feel. I'm right. I'm a, I'm that type of guy. I will come up and talk to you. I'm, I'm I, I was you know. I'm hey, a, not aggressively. No. You're gonna walk up and I'm, you're gonna talk openly and vulnerably. I'm a Midwest dude through and through, and that's how I was raised. Is like address this. I'm not a. I'm gonna do the same. Talk thing. me on your back. I'm gonna do the same thing. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm and I and I haven't shit talk. You know, Chris no. in any way. I think he's very funny and I think he's very successful. I think that's a very correctable still, situation. I still love what they, they're they doing together. I think they're great, talented guys and I wish them all the success in the world. But, you know, it hurts when, it'd be, it'd be it nice. hurts when the text messages all become blue because yeah. then you just feel like you're not loved and that really hurts me because I'm an insecure stand-up comedian. It would be nice to be included. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know. And I, I did, for me personally, I got to say no, only because I didn't come up with Chris, Brian, Theo. These guys are friends and doing this sure. for each other because they all came up together and they've formed deep friendships. Yeah. I'm not their friends and I'm not, I didn't come up with them. I don't expect anything. And I don't expect that, you know, it's the same in New York. That's why it's quite strange being placed where I am because I, I get to talk to different people who are very successful or coming up or whatever, all different places in the industry. Um, but no one's quite sure where I come from or what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. Because all my success was in England. I came out and went straight into the cellar. So they don't fucking know. Yeah. And I get that people are untrustworthy of me. Plus I look like every villain from every movie. <laughs> You know what I mean? I look like I'm going to fucking... I shall destroy you from within. You're going to blow up the Nakatomi Plaza. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's a lot going on in this fucking face. And you do have the bad guy villain. Vibe. I do. I do. I do. And I will destroy each and every one of you. If you don't make me successful, I will murder your entire family. Um, dude, good talking. Yes. Uh, I hope that... I hope, and I doubt he will, but if he does, I hope he bothers to watch this episode if Patton sees it. And I hope that um, I hope there's at least some building of a rift. I, if you haven't seen it yet, go to my Instagram uh, at Jeff Leach and look at the video I did of um, I did a rap video. I made a little rap and impro- I free- well I didn't freestyle. I wrote the bars, but I did a, an, a rap that I wrote in like ten minutes, all about how I'm fed up of comedians pretending like they're fucking rappers, yeah. taking photos. You know, Aziz and Amy Schumer taking photos on private jets. You know, Tracy Morgan popping bottles of fucking yeah. you know uh, expensive champagne. And now it seems like the done thing that comedians beef with each other, like they're fucking rappers. Yeah. And it's bullshit. Because if you're a rapper, <laughs> then buy a gun and go and shoot Patton Oswalt, or Patton Oswalt, go and buy a fucking whatever, semi-automatic, because he's got more money because he's wealthy, so he'd have a better gun, right? Yeah. And he'd have to drive by in probably, you know, an Uber black because he's got cash, right? He's got the account. Yeah. And brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
past in green rooms. You might walk past each other in the hallways of the comedy store. You don't have to be. You don't have to be friends. But fuck it, turn it into something funny. Yeah, that's what I think. Anyway, rest in peace, Brody Stevens. If you do that, I want to. I want to be the. I want to be the referee, and I'm going to wear the tiniest British speedos ever. Ew. Oh, I'm going to be so European, bro. You're I'm going gonna... to. I'm going to grow out manscape.com. I'm sorry. I'm going to grow out my upper thigh hair and wear a pair of dad speedos. You look like an in shape Burt Kreischer. Can't wait. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Anyway, man. Appreciate you coming on, cool. dudes. I hope that's cleared out. And thanks very much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>